In this video, we'd like to give an introduction to a marvelous device called the transistor. I have a transistor here, and hopefully you bought one in your kit of electronic parts. And what it is, is a very small device, about the size of your small finger there. It has three terminals coming off of it, if you look at it. One, two, three. Most of the things that we've looked at thus far just have two, and transistors three. Let me tell you how it works. In a nutshell, what the transistor does is boost current. Another way you might think about boosting is the word amplifier, which comes up a lot in electronics. So yes, the transistor is a current amplifier, and here's how it works. Let's ignore the internals of the transistor just for a moment here and draw out the three key terminals that it has like this. So I'm just sort of separating the terminals out like this. The one up here is going to be called the collector, and the one down here is going to be called the emitter. And these names are definitely traditional. They go back to the original design of the transistor. You just sort of have to get them in your head because they stick, but they have very little to do with the behavior as we'll use them in these videos here. The base collector and the emitter like this. And here's how the transistor works. Here's how the transistor works. If you send a small current into the base, it'll sort of go through the transistor, you know, whatever's in there, and come out the emitter. That's the way the transistor is defined. It's the way it works inside. Current injected into the base, works itself through the transistor element itself, and comes out of the emitter like this. And what we'll do, we'll call that I for current, B, I the base. What will happen is that when you do that, when you inject that current into the base, which comes out of the emitter like that, a larger current will flow between the connector and the emitter like this. I'll sort of draw it as a thicker arrow here just to introduce that point here, that a smaller current here will introduce a much larger current between the collector and the emitter. And we'll call this one here, say, I sub collector emitter like that. And in normal transistor action, sort of the low level understanding of it, the current that runs through the collector emitter is always going to be much, much greater than the current that was injected into the base. And you know what? That's it. That's all we really need to say about the transistor. So it's a device that sits between two current loops and makes the current in one much larger than the current in the other. Let's look at another diagram of the transistor here. So it behaves in a nutshell as a current amplifier like that. In terms of the operating characteristics, it's sort of going to work like this. Here's the three terminals, and I'll draw the electrical schematic for a transistor more accurately now so we sort of can use those and you'll recognize them if you see them in other places like this. An arrow down here, this is the collector, this is the emitter, and this is the base right here. Something like that. This is the electrical schematic for a transistor. And I suppose the arrow points towards the emitter indicating the direction that the current ultimately comes out of. It goes into the base, out of the emitter, down through the collector, out of the emitter. Typically, the way we're going to use transistors throughout this video series here is we're always going to ground the emitter right here. So the emitter is always going to be connected to the ground. This is always going to be at zero volts right here. And that transistor works like this. If the voltage on the base is greater than the voltage on the emitter plus 0 0.6 volts, something like that, a fairly simple equation here. We hate to get too mathematical on you, but it's just a little rule here. If the voltage at the base is greater than the voltage of the emitter, plus 0.6 volts, but what we said is we're always going to hold the emitter down here at zero volts. So really what we're saying here is if the voltage at the base is greater than 0 0.6 volts. In other words, however you do it or whatever you do, if you make the voltage on the base greater than 6 volts, then suddenly what will happen as a re result of that here, let's just say the collector emitter path will conduct. That's it. That's another sort of in the nutshell what a transistor does here. If you raise that base voltage by six tenths of a volt above the emitter, which we're assuming is at zero volts, then the collector emitter path will suddenly conduct. In other words, this path down here will suddenly start conducting electricity. But conversely, if the voltage on the base here is less than 0 0.6 volts, or more completely, 
if it's the voltage at the emitter minus 0.6 volts, if it's less than that value right there, the, the collector emitter path will not conduct. In other words, this beautiful pink arrow here indicating induction will just cut off. So you see, there's a second sort of use of a transistor. It behaves like a switch, an electrically controlled switch. Because remember, voltages are all about electricity here. So if you're applying 0.6 volts to the base, or is this to say in general, if you apply some voltage to the base, if that voltage is above 0.6 volts, the collector emitter will conduct. If the voltage on the base is less than 0.6 volts, the collector emitter will not conduct. That tr transistor can be considered either on or off, depending on this voltage here. So this voltage here would be considered the on state. This condition down here would be considered the off state. And by the way, the conduction is always from the collector to the emitter. So in other words, when you're wiring these things up here, the voltage on the collector must always be greater than the voltage on the emitter, or it won't work. The transistor really is like two diodes built together, and as we saw in a previous video, diodes only conduct electricity to one direction. Transistors have a lot of the same characteristics, but it's not a big deal. It's very easy to always think of connecting the collector here to some positive voltage like 9 or 10 or 20. The emitter is always grounded, and the base is sort of your control element here. So what you have is you have a current amplifier, and you have an electrically controlled switch. The switching current runs through the collector emitter segment. The base is like your control knob. So in the next couple of videos, we'll build some simple circuits to think about the idea of how a transistor amplifies current and how it behaves like a switch.